Europe is about to ban most of the best TVs you can buy. And if you think that doesn't affect you, think again. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and let's just get into this. I'm, wow. Okay, look, here's what's happening. As of right now, on March 1st, 2023, a revised restriction on TV power consumption goes into effect in EU nations. And if nothing changes between now and then, there isn't a single 8K TV that can be sold in the EU. A handful of 4K OLED TVs will also be banned, 65 inch QD OLEDs will be off the shelves, and even a few 4K QLED TVs, they won't make the cut either. So yeah, most of the best TVs that you can buy today simply won't pass muster, can't be sold in the EU, and would effectively be banned. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first heard this, I kind of dismissed it as ridiculous, as in, <laughs> no way is this true. Well, it turns out it is true. I still think it's ridiculous, but it is definitely not something we should just shrug our shoulders at. This has some huge implications, which I'm gonna get to in a moment, but first, how did we get here? Well, there's a lot of mystery around that as well, but here is what I do know. Several years ago, the EU developed what it calls the Energy Efficiency Index, or EEI for short. In order to figure out what the energy efficiency of a display was, the commission looked at data from displays that were sold between 2012 and 2017. So TVs that are now seven to 10 years old. Now, I haven't dug into the methodology of how they determine these efficiency numbers. Did they measure the power use of a TV when it displays a 10% white window? Is it a full screen white window? Is it a giant bright moon on a black background? I don't know, I will find out, but what I can say for now is that the TV industry generally felt like the numbers the commission came up with were sound and fair and that meeting those efficiency standards was totally doable. And they have been meeting those standards for a few years now. Now, keep in mind that these efficiency standards were developed for HD and UHD or 4K TVs and things have been fine. But fast forward to a few months ago when the EU decided it was going to not only increase the efficiency requirement, meaning HD and 4K TVs will have to consume less power than they do now, but they also decided that after reducing that number by like 0.20, they would also just copy and paste the exact same power efficiency standard to apply to both 8K and micro LED TVs. And therein lies the problem. Either somebody in this governing body doesn't understand the fundamental science behind how TVs and displays work, or they just don't care. Because 8K TVs consume a lot more power than 4K TVs, because they have to. And in fact, several 4K TVs, like the 65 inch versions of the Samsung S95 QD OLED, the Sony A95K QD OLED, and the Samsung QN95B consume enough power that while they passed the requirement before, as of March 1, 2023, they're not gonna. And where 8K TVs are concerned, it's not like they're just barely over the line. Most 8K TVs on the market blow past the limit by like 300%. They consume three times more power than the limit. So they aren't even close to being okay. Now at this point, I can practically hear some of you out there saying, well, 8K TVs are stupid anyway. So I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for this situation. And besides, sucks for Europe, but I live in America and there's no shot we'd pass such a restrictive law here. To which I would respond, well, A, don't forget that this also bans the best 4K TVs on the market and micro LED TVs. It's not just about 8K. And B, it could absolutely affect us here in the US and in pretty much every other country. I'll explain why in a moment, but first, why is it that 8K TVs consume triple the amount of power of most 4K TVs? I mean, that can't be right, can it? Oh, but it's true. I spoke to Chris Chinock, who heads up the 8K Association and penned a paper on this very topic. You'll find a link to it down in the description. And he points out that as most of us know, an 8K TV panel has four times the pixels of a 4K TV panel. And because of the way LCD panels work, it is a lot harder to pass light through the tiny aperture of those tiny pixels. The harder it is to pass light, the harder you have to push. And that means increasing the brightness of the backlight, which as you can imagine, requires a lot more power. 
three times the power as it turns out. So 8K TVs necessarily need way more power just to be as bright as 4K TVs, let alone a bit brighter if we're talking about a premium TV. Changing this would require reinventing the LCD panel as we've known it for decades. That's not happening overnight, if it happens at all. So what could be done? Well, one idea that's been floated is that TV makers could come up with what would basically be an EU picture mode. See, the way the EU rules work, the TV just has to pass the efficiency standard by drawing no more than a certain amount of power as the TV comes out of the box for an SDR signal. You can change it to power guzzle mode later if you want to, but in this case, the out of box picture mode would be a super duper ultra eco mode for SDR made just for the EU. And again, because of how 8K TVs work, the resulting picture would be so dim, it would be laughable. This is such a bad solution on so many levels. First off, can you imagine the average consumer going to the store and seeing this amazing TV, buying it, getting it home, turning it on, and getting a super ridiculously dim picture on their TV? I mean, they might think it was broken and then return it. So how do you solve for that nightmare problem? Well, I suppose salespersons could warn their customers that when they get their TV home, they're gonna need to click the settings button, then go to picture settings, then scroll down to this menu and turn this thing off and then go into this other menu and select, you know what? We have actual data that shows that the overwhelming majority of folks never change the picture mode on their TV. They just use whatever it's set to as it comes out of the box. That's another kind of tragedy, but can you just imagine? But you know what? Maybe the problem isn't the 8K TVs or the super bright 4K TVs. Crap, we haven't even talked about micro LED TVs, rest in peace. But maybe the problem is the rule. Maybe you can't just copy and paste standards from 4K TVs to 8K TVs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. This standard needs to be reviewed and revised. But unfortunately, sources close to the commission responsible for this standard are reportedly not really interested in revisiting this. And that's not okay. I mean, nah, 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 I can't hear you. I mean, it's so childish. Now, before you attack me in the comments for being against energy saving and efficiency, Understand that I, as a tree-hugging, dedicated composter and recycler who supports wind and solar energy and drives a tiny little electric car here in the uber green state of Oregon, I'm all about energy conservation. I do think TVs need to be as efficient as possible. I'd like to see energy consumption during an energy crisis go down. Yeah, that's not just reasonable, it's smart. But there are better ways. Like, what about this idea? What if TVs didn't just stay on all day whether you were watching them or not? What if there was a feature on TVs that was something like Netflix's Hey, You Still Watching feature, where you would click a button every hour or so to confirm that you are actually watching the TV as opposed to having just left it on all day for giggles or maybe forgot to turn it off before you left the house. I bet that would save a lot more energy because as you've probably figured out by now, you can just take a TV out of its eco mode and have it be an electricity guzzler if you want to. There's no stopping that. Perhaps stopping the waste of energy would be a better tactic. Anyway, for all of you out there who might be like, ha ha Europe, sucks to be you, I wouldn't be so quick to chuckle in your little bubble, okay? Look at what just happened with Apple. The EU just said, yeah, from now on, USB-C is the charging port on phones in our nations. That's just how it is. You think Apple is gonna make one USB-C iPhone for the EU and another phone for every other nation? <laughs> well, since it is Apple, maybe at first they will, just as a big middle finger to the whole situation, but ultimately, no. Apple will make one phone that it sends to all nations. This illustrates how the EU has the power to make global changes when it makes policy. Also, look at California emissions. Do car makers make one car for Californians and another for the rest of the US? Not anymore. All cars have to pass California emission standards off the production line, whether they're headed to California or Connecticut. So yeah, if this EU rule goes into effect without any modification, it is going to seriously rattle a number of industries. Not just the TV makers, but the folks who make content and every other organization in the middle. The ramifications of this move are massive. And I would argue this whole debacle is just irresponsible. So make some noise about this. Get the word out, share this video, send some emails to officials, make it known that this poor, ham-handed, short-sighted, ignorant policymaking isn't gonna slide. 
we can affect change if we make an effort. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about this whole issue? Leave me a comment about that down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and here's two other videos that I think you might like.